Welcome to episode two of Ape Answers, the ham radio show where we answer your questions. Today, we have a couple of questions from viewers who were curious about off-center fed dipoles. Now, an off-center fed dipole is a type of HF antenna similar to a dipole, but it's fed offset from the middle of the antenna. And when we do this, we can usually get multiple band operation on these antennas. Let's take a look at the questions. Okay, so Baseman Junior 100 says he has a couple of Elmers, and one of them says he only uses resonant antennas. By this, he means the standard fed dipoles. He has a center fed fan dipole, 160, 80, 40, and 20. They all go in different directions. Is this the best way to go if you have space? I have plenty of room, acres and acres. What's a good option? I don't want to deal with towers. Budget is more limiting than space. So he asked this on the off center fed dipole video. And here we have a depiction of an off-center fed dipole. And then you can see where the box mark T is not in the center, so it's not a traditional dipole. Now, there's a lot of opinions and debate as to where you feed this. Some say you use a ratio of around 25 to 75. Some say 30 to 70. Some say 40 to 60. That's going to depend on you, what band you want to operate on, and how you want your off-center fed dipole to work. But in any event, by moving the transformer, we typically use a four to one anon to do this. We can find a consistent feed point impedance for multiple frequencies and allow us multiband operations. One of the drawbacks of the L center fed dipole is one, it's prone to common mode current problems. And two is that you would get radiation patterns that are atypical from a standard dipole cut for a particular frequency. So in this particular example, let's say this is a 40 meter off center fed dipole for its fundamental frequency. The length of the two wires would be around 66 feet long. Now, when you operate 20 meters on this, you're going to get a full wave of current on your antenna, and that's going to make your radiation pattern a little bit less predictable. The other challenge that you have is with an antenna like this, antennas are very uh, specific where they are mounted above ground. And by using the same antenna on multiple bands, you're not going to get that same height above ground that's typically recommended for your fundamental frequency, which is typically a half wavelength. So here's a depiction I did of a fan dipole, and this would have three different bands on here. Now it's not to scale, but let's just assume the long one is 40 and then 20 and then the shortest being 10 meters. And you can see that this antenna has the same problem with respect to height above ground. The other thing that you'll have with this antenna is you will have some interactions between the different elements for the different frequencies where they would affect your radiation pattern. Um, I'm not really that big a fan of fan dipoles. I guess that's a little bit of a pun that I said there, but I don't really have a problem with them either. If I had unlimited space, I think I would go with the off-center fed dipole or I would look at other N-fed wire antenna configurations like a 9 to 1 random wire or 49 to 1 N-fed. Hope this helps. WR3ND is a pretty common question. What's the difference between an off-center fed dipole and a random wire with a counterpoise? I mean, in practical terms. The only thing that comes to mind offhand would be that you presumably want the off-center fed dipole to be resonant across the combined lengths of the elements and the random wire to not be resonant on the positive element. But what is the practical difference in physical design? Thanks. <clears throat> you know, this is a question that I'll often ask people who fancy themselves antenna experts because I've often been confused about it myself. So one of the things is, is that with a random wire antenna, you don't want it to be resonant on any frequencies within the ham bands or any harmonics thereof. And you typically would use a tuner to tune that antenna. With an all center fed dipole, you want that antenna to be resonant on a fundamental frequency. Folks typically go with 40 or 80 meters. And then you can use relationships to the length of the wire with other bands. And you can typically feed them at a feed point impedance that is shared across multiple frequencies. So for example, a 40 meter fundamental off center fed dipole typically gives you 20 and 10 meters while you're at it. Sometimes you can get other, other frequencies like 15, 17, 12, or you can use a tuner to kind of touch them up because they're going to be close, but they're not going to be exact. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, here's our example of an off-center fed dipole again. And let's take a look at this. So you have coax feeding into a particular location on your element. 
And so on one side, you would have the side to your center conductor, and then on the short side, you would have your side to ground. And the thing is, is that you have this transformer located at a specific position on your antenna. With an all-center fed dipole, you look for around a 200 ohm impedance. Now, I know some folks will say, well, I don't use a 4 to 1 transformer. I use a 2.8 to 1, or I use a 5 to 1. I use a 6 to 1. That's going to depend on where you feed this thing and what type of design you're going to use. But typically, they have a 4 to 1. Now, when you take a look at something like this, it's the same antenna, but now it's mounted in an inverted V. And that will change the radiation patterns and it might change your feed point impedance a little bit. And you might have to adjust the location or the composition of your transformer. But when you look at this antenna, this would be our random wire antenna mounted on the ground in the sloper configuration with a counterpoise extended out. If you take a look at this antenna, fundamentally, it's the exact same antenna. You have coaxial feeding into your transformer. Your transformer is placed somewhere with a ratio of counterpoise to element and it's just a different ratio and then because of the placement of that ratio or your feed point you're going to have different impedance levels so in this case most of the time we use a nine to one transformer and then we use a tuner because we're wanting this to be uh, usable on multiple bands not just ones that fit into the wavelength ratio of an off-center fed dipole you can also mount the nine to one uh, random wire antenna as an inverted l so this would be your counterpoise on the ground, and then you have a certain amount of your antenna, typically two-thirds going vertically, and then one-third going off to the side. But again, and I know this will probably start some drama, the only difference I see between a random wire antenna like this and an off-center fed dipole is the feed point impedance based off the ratio of element to ground. And that's it. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Now, if you everybody. ask any questions on one of my videos, you might get featured in the next episode of Ape Answers. Thanks for watching everybody.